How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, the title speaks for itself. I rarely do any type of local stories. And I did do a local story months ago about the homeless issue in Oakland, California. But we know that this homeless issue is on a global scale. And so there was a lot of drama in Oakland, California, because these, um, these queens, they had to go to the far extreme to put a spotlight on the drama with homeless people. So I'm going to read this article to the royal family. I'm going to read it from um, my laptop. <clears throat> okay. Oops, excuse me for that. All right, my royal family, let's get into it. Donations pour in for moms for housing as evicted women claim victory. Crowdfunding account raised over 40000 in one day. Moms for Housing go to bring awareness to the current housing crisis in Oakland was met with pushback following their arrest and release from jail after being evicted from the abandoned home that they been living in since November. According to a press release, the belongings of the mothers and children who live in the home have been destroyed. The re, the re, uh, release revealed that East Bay Mud, East Bay Mud is our water company, dug a ditch around the home and um, Wedgwood, Wedgwood is a real estate company slash corporation, had moved, had, had movers dump all the family's personal belongings in the street. Their belongings became wet and dirty and the mothers could not remove them from the house because East Bay Mud is preventing them from using a moving truck to take their personal items out of out of the house. Wedgwood dumped our children's bedding and all our belongings in the street, said Dominique Walker, a homeless mother of two, a survivor of domestic violence, and also Lee's Moms for Housing group. Everything we own is wet and destroyed. We can't even carry our things out because of um, the enormous open trench um, dug by East Bay Mug around the property. Walker added, this just goes to show you that it's not just that Wedgwood doesn't care what happens to us. They hate us. They hate homeless black mothers and children. Wedgwood CEO um, Greg Glisser is on the board of a openly white supremacist media organization, PragerU. So this comes as no surprise. Okay, let me scoot this on up. A group of homeless mothers in Oakland came to face to face with military weapons on Tuesday morning after police from the Alameda Sheriff's Office entered the vacant home where they were living to evict and arrest them. Four people were arrested and booked into Santa Rita jail. Two mothers, Miss Cross, Miss King, uh, Miss Baker and Miss Turner, who are members of Moms for Housing Movement and um, following their arrest, support poured in by the hundreds. Fundraising efforts were made to assist with their bail in the GoFundMe page, Mom for Housing Freedom Fund, which has a goal of 2,000, exceeded 40,000 by Wednesday afternoon. The women and their supporters were released from jail after posting 5,000 on Tuesday afternoon, returned to the home to celebrate where they were they considered to be a victory, according to San Francisco local CBS affiliate. The women who live in the home with their children said that there was a bigger issue at hand than living in the home 
was a symbolic measure to raise awareness surrounding the housing crisis in Oakland. The families moved into, into the three bedroom home in November. All right, let's see here. Some of this crap I'm gonna, um, this is uh, something I skipped, it ain't even necessary. That particular home was chosen to expose the greed of the local real estate company that owns the property. Wedgwood um, brought the property for 500000 at a for foreclosure auction last year and had planned to fit, flip the 1,500-square-foot property, according to San Francisco Gate. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, yeah, this is the good part. Alliance of California for Committee Empowerment said we are not uh, trying to take the individual properties of moms and pops, for mom, uh, of moms and pops. Don't let Sam Singer tell you that. We're talking about the greed of wealthy corporations that are robbing all of us. After the women were released, they returned to the home with, okay, we got that part to celebrate. Okay, I'm not going to double that. I want to get, always want to stay on point. Let's see here. The home has been boarded up with wood and a fence has been placed around the property. But Cross said that is a temporary solution. This ain't going to stop, she said. That's a temporary fence. It's not in concrete. Anything built up can be broken just like the system. Okay, so then um, Dominique Walker echoed Miss Cross' sentiments. This home was a statement. It was a symbol of what needs to happen in Oakland, Walker said. This was an absolute victory. The four individuals um, um, who, were, um, who committed a crime committed uh, okay committed a crime in the eyes of the law enforcement but was celebrated by the by the community have placed a spotlight on the housing crisis in Oakland and how homelessness is being criminalized that's the truth so let's get over here and see if we can get this first video going I see it's acting janky all right I think one of my videos don't want to act right when I want to present it to the royal family. So what I will do is um, we'll get into another type of video, my royal family. And hopefully this one I can show it to the royal family later. Okay. four-year-old she'll be five on saturday Oops. and they have been so happy excuse me gotta take this to the beginning okay here we go this is democracy now i'm amy goodman with juan gonzalez we turn now to oakland california where a group of mothers fighting homelessness are waging a battle against real estate speculators and demanding permanent solutions to the bay area housing crisis by occupying a vacant house with their children the struggle began in november when working mothers in west oakland moved into 2928 magnolia street a vacant house owned by real estate investment firm wedgwood properties the firm tried to evict them, claiming they were illegally squatting on private property, but the mothers went to court and filed a right to possession claim, saying housing is a human right. Their name is Moms for Housing. This is a video by Brandon Jordan and Marianne Mickelberg. My name is Dominique Walker. I am one of the co-founders of Moms for Housing, and the goal of our organization is to reclaim houses back into the hands of the community and to 
house un unsheltered moms and children. There's four vacant houses for every one homeless person in Oakland. We are reclaiming this house from a billion dollar corporation who bought this house at a foreclosed price. It has been vacant for two years while people are living out on the street. We felt like this was necessary to take this step. Like even when I personally tried to go through the proper channels to get help to move and be able to pay these rent, they're still not um, affordable. So I feel like it was up to us to organize ourselves to be able to have housing. In the last two years, homelessness in Oakland has increased by 47%. With average rental rates in Oakland rising to nearly $3,000 a month, there are few or no options for most people looking for housing. There are six to 8,000 folks sleeping on the streets, um, and that's not even accounting for all of the unhoused people in housing insecure. Homelessness affects your mental health, um, brain development in children, their physical health, and 28% of the homeless population now in Oakland is under the age of 18. I have a, um, a one-year-old and a four-year-old, she'll be five on Saturday, and they have been so happy to, um, to have a place to call home. It's our fridge, stove, kitchen area. We had to do a lot of um, fixing up this house, and we're still working on it. Um, this house was not kept up to code. But my children have been so excited to be sheltered. Um, my one-year-old start walking since we've been in the house, and he's had a baby zone where he can crawl around and stand up and start to take those first steps. Um, and he did that here. This um, house was owned by Wedgwood, a company that is a displacement machine. They're composed of five different companies. They all play a role in the direct displacement of people. We're taking a stand, and it doesn't end I, I with it. one house. Wedgwood Properties has offered to pay for moving expenses and temporary housing for the women for two months if they vacate the house. A proposal Moms for Housing has rejected. The battle for the house came to a head last week when an Alameda County judge ruled in favor of Wedgwood Properties and ordered the mothers to vacate the house. But Moms for Housing has stayed to fight eviction. Monday night, hundreds of people from the neighborhood and beyond gathered at the house after receiving a tip that the sheriff's office was coming to evict the families. Stop the eviction! We won't move! Stop the eviction! We won't move! My name is Nicole. I'm an organizer with Mom's House Solidarity Committee. And uh, we just got word that the sheriffs were on their way to evict Moms for Housing. Um, and so we sent out a text blast um, to over 1,800 people. And that was maybe 15 minutes ago. As you can see, um, we've got hundreds of people showing up um, to defend the house, um, which is a really beautiful and awesome thing. Um, and so we're here and we're holding fast. People are out here. The community has had enough. We've had enough. And it shows you that we've, we've had enough and we're going to fight back. to run up in here tonight. That didn't happen. They were on the 5 o'clock news saying that they would be indoors any minute. And then they had a, another person here saying that they would come in at 7, and they didn't. So I think they understand how, like Dominique said, how the town get down. So we got reports that it was on CNN that the sheriff said there would be no entry tonight. <laughs> that is definitely reason for applause, and at the same time, we don't trust the sheriff. Please go home if you have a home to go to, and get some rest, because this is still the beginning of a fight. 
That was Carol Fife, who's joining us live in the studio, the piece produced by Brandon Jordan and Marianne Meckelberg, as we go now to Berkeley, California, where we're joined by Moms for Housing's Dominique Walker and Carol Fife, the director of the Oakland Office for Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! I don't know if you have gotten any sleep, but Carol, that's you speaking last night. There are hundreds of people who are in front of the house. Uh, you say you heard on CNN that the sheriff said, okay, he's not moving in. But explain what's happening now. Right. We got word from uh, the daughter of Dorothy King, of Everett and Jones, that she saw it on the news, that there would be no entry um, by the sheriffs last night. They did drive by a couple more times, but they did not attempt to enter the home to serve the eviction notice. So we're going into our second day of eviction defense for Moms for Housing. And Carol, could you talk a little bit about the scope and the scale of the housing crisis that uh, uh, that Oakland is facing, but that many cities across the country uh, have similar problems, if not at the level of the situation right now in Oakland? Right. After the housing crisis um, and the foreclosure crisis of 2008, many homeowners lost their primary residences, their only residences. And so that allowed speculators and the banks that were bailed out um, by the government at that time to come in and scoop up homes at rock bottom prices. So um, that, is, that is still happening and we're still experiencing the impacts of the foreclosure crisis with speculators owning 35% of the housing stock in America. So some state that Oakland has the worst speculation crisis in the country and that's uh, observable by how high the rents are. You have uh, the median one bedroom market rate uh, unit starting at around $2,500 a month. And so the housing wage, which is different from the minimum wage or a living wage in Alameda County where Oakland is located, is $40.88 per hour. And that is um, out of reach for many of uh, Oakland's working class people. Dominique Walker, you're one of the women who, uh, with your families, are occupying this house. Explain when you got into it and what is happening right now, how long you've been there, and what this legal process has been, what your plans are. Um, yes, we um, moved in to Magnolia Street on November 18th. Um, we've been there ever since, and we count that as a win. Um, we've provided shelter for our children. This came out of absolute desperation, out of going through every program set up to help families in this predicament. Nothing helped. We were turned away. Programs were, um, the funding was cut from programs that were set up to help. This was an act of de desperation, and it just gives light to the bigger issue going on um, here all over the world. And could you talk a little bit about what your situation before you decided to uh, to uh, occupy this particular property, or your housing situation with your family? Yes, I moved back um, to Oakland in April uh, 2019 with my two small children from Mississippi. And I was working full time with a part time job as well. And could not afford rents. First, I was staying um, housing insecure, living with family members, but most of my entire community has been displaced. I was born and raised in Oakland, and most of folks are either displaced out um, at least 45 minutes to a couple hours out, or they're displaced onto the street. So I was commuting um, for hours, trying to get into Oakland to serve my community. And um, after situations didn't work out, living on couches and in rooms, um, I was living in hotel rooms. And um, being homeless is very violent. And um, I've seen the development in my children since they've had shelter. My son took his first steps on Magnolia Street, said his first words. My daughter turned five in the house on Magnolia Street. Um, it's an absolute necessity um, to have shelter, and it's a basic human right. 
So the San Francisco Chronicle says almost 70% of the people living in Oakland streets are African American. Uh, however, African Americans constitute just 28% of Oakland's population. I wanted to talk about one of the young people who are in the house. Let's turn to Destiny Johnson. She's one of the kids living in, well, what everyone is calling now, Mom's house. Okay, so what's the what, what? What's going on? What's happening? My mom and lots of other moms, all who have young kids, all who are experiencing some kind of homelessness, took over this abandoned home, a vacant property a house no one was living in for close to two years. We fixed it up, now we live in it. We made it a home, and here it is. And here it is. Now I have a clean and quiet place where I can do my homework. So in the morning, when the sun comes up, I like to sit on the back steps and read. And it has this little front yard with the trees. I do. I worry a lot. I worry for my mom because she puts herself out there. And I worry for my little sister. She's only five. She's a kid. She doesn't really understand what's, what's going on. And I know she's already falling in love with having a place to call home. That was Destiny Johnson in a video produced by Zween Works. Juan? Yeah, I wanted to ask Carol Fife about Wedgwood Properties. Uh, what uh, what can you tell us about the firm itself and also about the public relations guy by the name of Sam Singer that they've they've selected basically to be their uh, their spokesperson uh, uh, on the issue of what's going on in Oakland? I will speak about that because I have to. Um, I hate to give credence and, and time to such awful individuals and such um, evil organizations. Wedgwood Properties um, has approximately 96 subsidiaries and they are the real estate speculator that is um, holding the deed for mom's house. They are in the business of buying homes at rock bottom prices and flipping them. And that is part of the problem why housing is so unaffordable in cities like Oakland. They buy houses by, by, the, by bulk, so 100 to 200 properties per month, if not more, and distressed neighborhoods, uh, their words, and then they flip them and sell them to the highest bidder. So it puts home prices out of reach for many um, working class people. So they drive up the cost of rents and the cost of actually purchasing a home, which is why home ownership levels are so low. And uh, since they are such bad characters, they've also hired another bad character to um, get them out of the situation and make them look like the victim. Um, and that is, is Sam Singer. And he's doing everything in his power to uh, villainize and criminalize the mothers. And we're seeing old stereotypes and old uh, tropes about black women on every single um, social media site where the moms are. There's trolls every day that are um, really working to tear the mothers down. Um, they've experienced different levels of violence, uh, one mother in particular, and it's just, it's, it's really sad the levels that they're going to, to criminalize these moms. Carol, in Mother Jones Magazine, they write in Oakland where buyers routinely offer hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking prices. There are nearly four vacant properties for every homeless person. It's not so right. much an issue of scarcity, but of distribution. Um, explain that further, and then explain what the judge ruled and wh where you see this headed now. I mean, the images of last night of the hundreds of people who called when uh, some kind of group text went out within minutes coming to the house. But talk about that, the level of vacancy. And, and that's what's criminal about uh, this housing crisis. There are actually places where people can live, but because it, they're private, they're privately owned, it makes it difficult to even crack into what a solution could be because 
the private industry doesn't have to be held accountable. And that is what we're saying is criminal. It should not be legal for anyone that owns property, particularly corporations. And we want to make a distinction because that's what's being thrown around a lot, too, is that if an individual mom and pop owner of a property um, left it empty because they're on vacation, then somehow Moms for Housing is advocating taking people's personal property. That is completely and patently false. What we're saying is corporations should not be able to hold vacant properties when there is a housing crisis. There should not be people living on the streets when there are, peop when there are places where they can live. This is, um, it, it, Oakland looks like uh, an entirely different city than it did years ago, and it's strictly due to corporations that are able to rent gouge when they have homes for rent and charge way over market for homes that are not worth what they're actually selling them for. And so this is starting a movement where people who are also experiencing housing insecurity, which means they pay, pay more than 30% of their income in rent, are waking up because they've seen this example of Moms for Housing defying what the market trends are and saying we deserve housing for all, not just for those who can pay the high, high price tags. And uh, Carol, what's been the response of the local uh, political leadership in Oakland? Uh, after all, Oakland is uh, is famous as the birthplace of the Black Panther Party. It was the place where Jerry Brown was a uh, uh, mayor for for a while. Uh, talk. Uh, what's what? Have, how have the political leaders responded to this crisis and to the protests in, sp in particular of Moms for Housing? It's actually been mixed, right? We have. Um city council members who've actually been at press conferences standing with the moms and we are, are are very grateful for their support and their leadership in thinking of creative ways that they can impact the housing crisis but we also have city council members who have been silent and you mentioned the black panthers and unfortunately is our african-american leadership that's been silent on this issue um, we have had support from other community organizations like the local NAACP and um, at the press conference that was recently held in Oakland regarding a Senate bill uh, that's supposed to develop additional housing, um, we heard on the podium that day, hadn't heard before, that several assembly members and several, several senators also support Moms for Housing. But what we're asking them, including our congresswoman, our governor, is to do more than just say that you support Moms for Housing. Make that tangible. Create some kind of uh, answer a phone call, answer an email, and really show up so there's like a tangible way to show that you are concerned about the housing crisis, not just words. And Dominique, can you talk about what it means to you when you looked outside last night um, and you saw how many hundreds of people and what this home means to you and your children, what it has felt like being in this house that was vacant for two years now for the last two months being there. Yes, um, last night was amazing. Um, it just showed me that <laughs> we're, it's still Oakland. We're, we're still Oakland. We um, are a town of, of resistance and we, and we fight back. And we saw our community have our full backs last night. Within 15 minutes, there were over, I think 300 people mobilized in 15 minutes. That's people power. Um, it's just been amazing to have a shelter for my children and to, to be this example for them. People always ask me, you, there's children involved, and I want my children to know that their mother was on the right side of history. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Uh, very quickly, Carol, what's the timeline now? Could um, Moms for Housing be evicted at any point? Moms for Housing could be evicted at any point. Um, and we, I, I just think it's important to say that we need to take speculation out of real estate, and we need to decommodify housing. And everyone that's showing up over the next two days up until Wednesday believes that, too. And Carol, we, we just hear the that night. there was a text that says uh, the sheriff is knocking on the door and saying people have to clear out. Is that your understanding as we're speaking? Yeah, I got to go. 
Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I think we got to go. We got to go. Well, we'll continue to cover this. Go to democracynow.org. We'll bring you updates throughout the day. I want to thank Carol Fife of the Oakland Office for Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, uh, and also Dominique Walker, who's one of the moms with her kids in the house uh, the sheriff is knocking on right now. She's with Moms for Housing. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we hear... All right, my royal family. You know, um, we're going to see if we can get this video. I look like it ain't going to happen. Let me see. Let me refresh it. Okay. Now the moms are inside. We just got news, right, uh, a few hours ago. So they're collecting their thoughts. And I just will speak briefly while they're collecting themselves that one of the mothers just lost her partner. In the news, we're hearing a lot about how... Um, unworthy they are of housing because they have children and they didn't make plans to take care of their children. And I really want to highlight how this particular situation has called into um, question and into the forefront how people are not valued. And it doesn't matter what choices you make in life. I've heard a lot through this conversation that they should work harder. They work two or three jobs, that they shouldn't have children. Some of them lost their partners through car accidents or just or bad health because they didn't have access to health care. So this, we want people to understand that this could be anyone. This could be you. This could be your loved one that needs housing, which is why we are screaming to the top of our lungs that housing is a right that everyone should have access to. That means whether you have an addiction issue, because I guarantee you the wealthy people that are buying up these issues, buying up these neighborhoods, have some addiction issues. That's right. Yeah. They're digging right. money. Right. Let's talk about it. I guarantee that the people who are buying up these homes, who can afford million dollar homes in formerly working class neighborhoods, also have mental health issues. Right? Yes. Just because you have an addiction or substance abuse issue or you may have challenges with mental health does not mean you do not have a right to housing. Yes, that's right. What we're seeing right now is the people who have a right to housing are the people who can pay the most for it. That has got to end. We have got to take speculation out of our housing conversation, right? It cannot be who has a million dollars. These homes that are for sale across the street are for close to $1.5 million. How They're saying, and it affects everyone, right? That the people who can save up enough for a down payment on homes have to compete with corporations like Wedgwood, who have hundreds of shell organizations and limited liability corporations that buy houses in bulk. So what that does for the average individual or family who wants to save up and buy a house when you go, you're, you, there's no way to compete. Right. So we're not dealing with individuals who are buying up homes. We're dealing with corporations. And newsflash, corporations are not people. Right. 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 So when they say you came and took a house that belongs to someone, no, it did before it was foreclosed on. Right. This system is rigged for the wealthy. All right. Viewers in the West, we're going to begin with breaking news. The vote. Okay. Let's shut that down. Um, I'm going to show you all some things here. This is how they was getting down the other night. All right, so they were evicted um, the other night, and um, that was the only video that I didn't pull up, and I want y'all to see how they got down. So based on um, the video that um, I showed the royal family, um, you would have thought the military 
had showed up, you know, literally, you know, um, and it was ridiculous. Oh Lord, was it ridiculous? So I want to show a video. That was the only thing that I did not um, pull up and I don't know what I was thinking. And they use battering rams in order to get them up out of the house. And let's see here. Um, okay. I'm going to try this one and see if it's, if they showed it on this one. Nope. Now the moms are inside. We just got news. Right? Oops, wrong one. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Let me go back over here. Okay, let's get this. Get another bird's eye view. Let's see what we have here. Did they show the process? No, they did not. They don't never want to see when they being greasy, but um, I did see it. Forgive me for being ill prepared, but um, I'm going to show it. I'm going to definitely show it. Y'all know it. Okay. Hmm. Let's get over here to the news. And. Oh, yeah. I think it's, I got it right here. Sound might be janky. Was moms who took over a vacant house in Oakland. Deputies in full tactical gear broke in the front door and took them away in a pre-dawn raid. The moms say this fight is not over. We Got showed it. you the tense moments unfolding live during our morning newscast tonight. Among the many questions, where will the moms go and what's next for this home? They're in West Oakland. NBC Bay Area's Melissa Colorado is in Oakland with the very latest on this story. Melissa. Raj and Janelle, a dramatic day here in West Oakland. We knew since Friday that deputies were going to come in, and sure enough, that's exactly what they did. Now, while those two moms were sitting in jail this afternoon, crews came in to fence in the house to make sure people were not going to be able to break into the house again. The moms say they have secured housing for their children, but they say their fight for affordable housing is far from over. They've called on their supporters to show up for a community barbecue now. Man, I'm fighting this fight, period. A defiant and re-energized Misty Cross walked out of Santa Rita Jail in Dublin Tuesday afternoon, capping off a dramatic day that started with this. Before dawn, deputies with the Alameda County Sheriff's Office rammed open the door of this West Oakland house to force out Cross, a mother of three, and another mother with Moms for Housing, Talani King. They had come up with a system uh, and a way to uh, secure those doors to make them difficult for us to enter the home. So we, we could not enter the home traditionally uh, with a key or, or using a locksmith. Law enforcement in riot gear stood outside as the house, once called Mom's House, was boarded up and turned over to the legal owner a real estate company out of Southern California named Wedgwood. Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff called the tactics used by deputies heavy-handed. These are mothers. They're not criminals. A spokesperson for Wedgwood says the company is pleased that deputies pulled off the eviction without anyone getting injured. The company says it will follow through on its promise to sell the home to a first-time home buyer. We're going to work with a nonprofit to restore this home with at-risk youth and Oakland craftspeople and we're going to split the profits. You want to try to take our voice? All you did was make this fight more stronger in us. The flame is burning so hard inside of my soul. Back out here live, you're looking at about three to four dozen supporters of Moms for Housing rallying outside of the home here in West Oakland. Now, it took a lot of resources and manpower for uh, deputies with the Alameda County Sheriff's Office to pull this eviction off. A spokesperson says they're going to be charging Wedgwood, the property that, the company rather, that owns this property, tens of thousands of dollars. That's the latest here in Oakland. So, my royal family, I know that the sound was janky, but I wanted y'all to see. Uh, the methods that they use 
in order to um, um, evict these queens. And, you know, they were very prepared, so their royal babies were not there. And um, let's listen to um, the lies. Um, that wedge with properties tail. Still outside the West Oakland house where early this morning, sheriff deputies from Alameda County removed a group of homeless mothers who had occupied that vacant building since November. This dispute has drawn national interest and involves issues including homelessness, gentrification, and race. We've heard from both the mothers group as well as law enforcement this morning. Joining us now is Sam Singer. He is the spokesperson for Wedgwood Properties, the real estate company that owns that disputed property. Sam, good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Hey, so far today, we've seen three people arrested. No one has been injured. The house is now boarded up. Sounds like this is the outcome Wedgwood Properties wanted, and they got it. Give me your reaction. We're very pleased that this ended peacefully. Um, and Wedgwood has done everything since this group broke into the company's property and took it over illegally. Um, we, we, we offered to meet with them if they voluntarily left. They refused that. Uh, we, we've offered to uh, and will continue to rehabilitate this home using a nonprofit giving at risk youth in Oakland uh, jobs, uh, life training skills. Uh, th that didn't make them happy. We'd even offered to provide them shelter and housing uh, through Catholic charities, and they rejected that. So we're very pleased, bottom line, that they are peacefully out of the property and that this has come to an end. So uh, let's talk about the moving forward here. Just, just to emphasize, the plan is not to just flip it, basically to sell it and make money. It, the, the, the whole idea is that Wedgwood, while it disagreed with the methods that these activists use, which is stealing someone else's property, which is never right to do, the company listened to the, to the women and the activists and they said, okay, on this particular property, we're going to work with a nonprofit, Shelter 37. We're going to employ Oakland youths who are at risk. We're going to give them an opportunity to work alongside professional craftspeople. We're going to split the, the profits from the sale of this home with Shelter 37 so that other at risk kids can benefit. I think what's sad about what the Mothers for Housing activists, squatters did is that they've held up the opportunity for kids to get an opportunity to get real life experiences and instead have made this about themselves. You know, there's really no right way to do a wrong thing and stealing someone else's property is simply wrong. Yeah, but Sam, one argument that I've heard from the mothers is, is pretty simple. Housing is a human right. Uh, do you or do Wedgwood Properties not agree with that, that housing is a human right? You know, the women made that plea to the court, and the court said that that wasn't within their purview to make a decision. But let's take a look at that piece of philosophy, whether one agrees with it or disagrees with it. For one moment, let's say, housing is a human right. Well, why then is it correct for this activist group to steal my client's home? That's not right either. Well, one claim is that, that Wedgwood is, is buying distressed homes, and maybe it's just not your client, maybe it's just real estate developers in general, that they're buying these distressed properties and that they're going in and purposefully keeping them empty, making sure no one gets in there so that they oh. can indeed flip it and make a, prop and make a profit. Oh, n believe me, um, that was always been a, that, that claim by the Mothers for Housing and housing activists, 100% false. Uh, and it doesn't make sense on the face of it. Wedgwood and other companies that buy foreclosed and distressed properties they buy them, they fix them up, and they sell them as quickly as possible. There's no such thing as holding them vacant. That's just a false charge by the activists. Look, you guys are on one side. I understand the mothers are on their side. Let me ask you specifically uh, about Oakland City Council members. Um, do you think that the City Council in Oakland needs to do more when it comes to, to getting people who are on the streets into, uh, into shelter, into homes? I think the Oakland City Council has shown that it didn't do the right thing. It backed the stealing of this home from a property owner, and it supported several, you know, the, the, the Mothers for Housing group. There was three council members who did that, Kalb, Bass, and Council President Kaplan. Those three council members shouldn't be spending time encouraging people to steal people's homes. They should be out encouraging corporations and using the city government to create more housing. I think that um, it's time for the Oakland City Council to step up, it's time right. for them to do the right thing. I think this is an example of their failure, and I think that uh, that really rests on their shoulders. There you go, Sam Singer, the spokesperson for Wedgwood Properties. I uh, appreciate you taking the time. All right, we know he a liar, and all of a sudden, now, 
they concerned about um, all of a sudden Wedgwood is concerned about housing at, yes, at risk youth. You know, they just threw that shit in there. They full of shit. And I pay attention to language. He asked him two specific questions. It is a right to be housed. He wouldn't answer it. Yay or nay. See how they get down? Then he asked about, you know, about Oakland City Council. He wouldn't answer that question directly either. They failed them all the way around. The mayor failed them. Um, the, um, yeah, the local government and the federal government and all the way up to Trump. We know how this shit is going on. There are numerous properties throughout the United States that are empty and movable. Not just properties, just ragged day. So that's some bullshit that they talking. So, last thing I want to play, we're going to listen to our royal daughter, Destiny, to the fullest. What's my name? My name is Destiny. My name is Destiny Acora Johnson, and I'm from Oakland, California. My teacher said, a tree is only as strong as its roots are deep. I always think about this. One of the first things I noticed when we got to this house, I saw these two trees. At first, I wanted to be this tall one. Its roots go way down. Look at this thing. Look at it. Look at that trunk. That beautiful brown bark. It's been on this block. It's been at this house. It's been planted in this community forever. But maybe I'm this other tree. It didn't get off to a great start. Someone even tried to cut it down. Look right here, you can see the ax mark. But it didn't die. It didn't give up. It looks kind of rough now. But inside, I know that tree is alive. I know it's hanging in there. It'll survive. It's gonna produce buds and flowers this spring. You'll see. Oh, we've been covering this story since it began and it's sparking a lot of debate. Here's the latest. The homeless moms who took over an empty house in Oakland have less than two weeks to leave. That's according to an eviction notice posted on the door of the abandoned home that they took over. The moms say they're staying put and want to negotiate with the company that owns the home. A spokesperson for the sheriff's office says if that house isn't empty by eviction date, by the eviction date, deputies will move in. I do like the tall one, but I think about this little one and how it looks to other people. Like you wouldn't even look at this thing. I mean, that's a tree over there. This is just a... I don't know what it is to other people. Like they definitely will remove it. They tried, but it held on. They gave up. So maybe it does have deep roots. It's definitely strong. Okay. Alrighty. Let's get to the next one. And then we'll be done here. All right, I just thought it was necessary to hear the voice of our royals. My name is Destiny. Her name is Destiny? Yep, deal with it. Okay, so what's the what what? What's going on? What's happening? 
my mom, and lots of other moms, all who have young kids, all who are experiencing some kind of homelessness, took over this abandoned home, a vacant property, a house no one was living in for close to two years. We fixed it up, now we live in it. We made it a home, and here it is. And here it is. Now I have a clean and quiet place where I can do my homework. So in the morning, the sun comes up, I like to sit on the back steps and read. And it has this little front yard with the trees. I worry, I do. I worry a lot. I worry for my mom because she puts herself out there. And I worry for my little sister. She's only five. She's a kid. She doesn't really understand what's, what's going on. And I know she's already falling in love with having a place to call home. Right now, we're just waiting. They're either gonna let us buy the house or evict us. The judge and the court, they're gonna decide. Sometimes it's all you can think about. Some might call these Oakland mothers radical. Homeless moms are drawing attention to real estate speculators in the midst of California's housing crisis. They're occupying a vacant house in West Oakland. That housing should be considered a human right. Housing as a human right. Housing is a human right. Deputies will be enforcing that decision. But we're not leaving. We're not going anywhere. All right, my royal family. So we have seen all the drama go down. They were evicted. I will be keeping up with this. Like I said, I don't do too many local stories, but I will definitely keep up with this and let the royal family know what's going on. And this is a global issue, and it makes absolutely no sense on our father's earth that anybody would be homeless, hungry, and worried to that extent. But it's really important that we put a spotlight on the royal family situation because ours is always triple and double, and then it affects our royal babies. But the shit that pisses me off at the level that they went to um, evict them I mean, you, I mean, the way it looked, you thought, I thought they was in a damn war zone. I said, it requires all of that. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. I, I just have to leave it like that because I'm so disgusted. So my royal family, render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And it's always my royal family. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, I say, damn shame. Mm-mm-mm.